excavated from a Mesa Verde ruin in 1903 that Fenn had won in a game of pool. The total value amounted to about three million dollars. Fenn decided he would hide the chest with a copy of his book in the desert, maybe even as he walked out into the wilderness to die. That could trigger a hunt of its own, spark some excitement. One day, an intrepid searcher would find his bones and his treasure and learn who he was. Think kindly of him. His memory would live on. It seemed like a perfect plan, except for one hitch. Fenn didn't die. Forrest Fenn's cancer went into remission, and it stayed that way. As a result, he didn't quite get around to burying that treasure. More than a dozen years passed. Then, in 2010, Fenn turned 80, and the milestone spurred him back into action. I had this treasure chest full of gold and jewels just burning a hole in my vault, he says. So I decided to go ahead and hide it somewhere in the mountains north of Santa Fe, leaving clues on how to find it for any searcher willing to try. The clues are encoded in the memoir he self-published that year, The Thrill of the Chase. There are nine of them, all contained in a single poem Fenn wrote. As I have gone alone in there, and with my treasures bold, I can keep my secret where, and hint of riches new and old. Begin it where warm waters halt, and take it in the canyons down, not far, but too far to walk. Put in below the home of Brown. From there it's no place for the meek. The end is ever drawing nigh. There'll be no paddle up your creek, just heavy loads and water high. If you've been wise and found the blaze, look quickly down your quest to cease. But tarry scant with marvel gaze. Just take the chest and go in peace. So why is it that I must go and leave my trove for all to seek? The answer, I already know. I've done it tired, and now I'm weak. So hear me all and listen good. Your effort will be worth the cold. If you are brave and in the wood, I give you title to the gold. As word spread about what Fenn had done, treasure hunters rushed to Santa Fe. Based on the 5,000 plus emails he has received about the treasure, he estimates that more than 1,000 people have searched for it though he assumes there must be others out there that he doesn't know about. Many who contact Finn are looking for a little extra help. Others simply want to share their stories. Dear Mr. Finn, wrote one, We don't think we will find the treasure chest, but I just want to thank you for getting me and my family off of the couch and out into the mountains. Another man told of how he went out to look with his grown son. The two slept in a van and talked about their hopes for the future. They gave up the search after two days, but it wasn't a wasted effort, the father wrote. If it hadn't been for the book, my son and I would never have had this time with each other. Which isn't to say the quest should be undertaken lightly. There are dangers involved, Finn says. Things can complicate the search. Earthquakes, mudslides, forest fires, floods, trees, falling rocks. There are those who have been at risk in water when they attempted to search someplace where it was not really safe to go. Some have not been prepared to face the elements after they parked their car and started walking. Some have lacked the proper clothing, food, and water. One eager individual donned scuba gear and swam along the bottom of a murky lake until he almost ran out of air. Another rode 28 miles on a bicycle in the snow and almost froze after getting wet, Fenn says. Still, the treasure hunters keep coming. One Chicago couple, for instance, told Fenn, 